Hello there, Kerry Carlo here, real estate agent with Renee Mears Realtors in North Texas. In my experience of working with buyers, especially with new buyers, it has become evident that there can be some element of fear involved in this new experience of acquiring life's most expensive asset, a house. My broker has a timeline that I've adapted to the PowerPoint video format. I hope this will help first-time buyers and even veteran buyers understand the process better. This point is so important it has a slide of its own separate from the flowchart. As an agent, I have had the privilege of holding open houses or otherwise coming into contact with prospective buyers. The second question I might ask after, do you have an agent, is, do you have a lender? It's important that you have shopped around for a lender or mortgage broker who will connect you with a lender. You get that pre-qualification letter, or maybe even better, in the competitive seller's market, a pre-approval letter. This serves two purposes. For one, you know what price range to enter as a search criterion. This avoids wasting your time and your agent's time looking at houses that require a loan amount that a bank will not likely consider underwriting given your credit score, etc. Secondly, you really cannot submit an offer on a home without this letter accompanying the contract. The seller or seller's agent need to know that you are at least considered able to get the loan you need to go through with the deal. And if you have a lot of cash to put down, don't be offended if you are asked for proof of cash on hand from your bank. There is much debate over the signing of a buyer's representation agreement. This document does have some benefits for you and for your agent. For you, it moves you from the position of customer to that of client. As a client, your agent owes you loyalty and advice and opinion. Also, if your agent becomes privy to any information from the seller that could help you in negotiations, he or she must disclose that to you. For your agent, it keeps him or her from working as a volunteer. It gives more assurance that, as the procuring cause of a sale, the commission will be paid. When you and your agent find homes you think might be of interest to you, the agent will either call a showing service or the listing agent and will make the necessary showing appointments. Most agents are patient about your needing to look at many houses and think things over, but in a strong seller's market, beware of delay if you find a home you love. Many a home has been snatched away by another buyer because of this delay. When you decide on a home, your agent and you will draft an offer. This will be sent, usually by email, to the seller's agent along with your pre-qualification letter and a copy of the seller's disclosure of property condition, which you will have initialed. On the contract, you will state your offer amount and any other conditions which you desire. The seller and his or her agent will either counter your offer, reject your offer, not respond to your offer, or inform you of the existence of multiple offers. You may be invited to submit a totally new offer if there are too many points to counter. Once there is a meeting of the minds by buyer and seller, one of the brokers will execute the contract by dating it. This date of execution is very important for keeping deadlines. You will also pay the seller an option fee for the privilege of having the home inspected as described below, and also you will pay earnest money to the title company. In Texas, the option period begins the next day after execution and goes for the negotiated period of time, say 10 days, and ends at midnight of the 10th day in this example. Your agent should keep you reminded of deadlines. During the option period, you should quickly get an inspector or inspectors to look at the home. You will pay a fee, negotiable, but usually around $100 for this privilege. Should you decide against buying the home during the option period for any reason, the seller keeps the option fee, but you will receive back your earnest money. If you find items during inspections that you want to have either the seller repair or negotiate a price modification for, your agent will amend the offer and the second round of negotiations will begin. 
During this time, also, be sure to check up on the area. Things such as hazardous conditions nearby, sex offenders, crime rate, possible zoning changes, which might bring a less than desired quality of life to the location. Call your insurer and be lining up your coverage. Once these items are resolved to the satisfaction of all, then the option period ends and you're committed to buy the house with two possible ways to end the agreement without breach. One, the appraisal ordered by the lender shows the sales price to be above what the lender will give in a loan. Second, you are unable to secure the loan during the period stated in the contract for that purpose. Remember, pre-qualified doesn't promise the money. It only says you seem like you will be approved. Review any HOA or POA documents. It is recommended that even if the seller has a survey, that you spend the money to get your own. If a mistake is made, your surveyor is accountable to you. You will be given a negotiable amount of time to make any objections to what is found in the survey regarding boundary lines, for example. Final approval of financing will be determined during this period. Again, if the financing falls through, you may walk away during the negotiated time period for securing the loan stated in the third-party financing addendum submitted with your offer. In your offer, you may ask the seller to purchase your residential service contract, usually for around $500. There are many companies who offer these and your agent will provide you with several to select among. During this time, after option period, the bank will be ordering the appraisal as mentioned above. If it doesn't come in high enough, either you can pay more cash down or the seller can lower the price or both can be done or you may walk away and not be in breach. Contact utility companies and be making arrangements for your services. If any repairs are supposed to be in progress, be monitoring these during this time. As closing day draws near, you will be given a chance to look at your HUD-1 or settlement statement on which the credits and debits to both buyer and seller will be documented in detail. Closing will be scheduled and usually on the day before you will do a final walkthrough and submit a document to the seller regarding whether any issues were unaddressed or if everything is completed to your satisfaction. The closing documents will be explained quite well in most cases by the closer. The closing will take place at the title company and the buyer and seller will each close at their own separate times. Papers will be signed, down payment delivered by you, loan funds handled by the title company and the keys will be delivered. Congratulations, the house is yours. This has been a brief overview of the process of buying a house. It cannot possibly cover every situation that could arise, but I hope it has served its purpose in giving the buyer a feeling of confidence upon entering into this new experience. This is Kerry Carloy, Renee Mears Realtors, www.kerrycarloy.com.